today uh, we have dr ramabhav patel with us our esteemed speaker for today's session so let us start by having a brief introduction of dr patel dr patel has extensive experience in the agriculture industry especially in the area of post harvest machinery mechanization etc dr patel completed his btech from college of agriculture engineering rahori after that he did his masters from iit kharagpur agriculture engineering department his phd was received from canada university of saskatchewan and finally he had post doctoral experience at washington state university in usa he has been held the post of director at the central institute of post harvest engineering and technology in ludhiana he was principal scientist at the central institute of agriculture engineering at icar he has been the director of technocrats institute of technology bhopal and also group director of technocrats institute of technology mba he has also uh, been involved actively in mentoring and advising startups he has been the chief technical ad advisor for innovation for khyati food private limited which worked on several interesting food products especially related to soy food he has been the chairman of benevol welfare society for post harvest technology whose mandate is to guide the upcoming entrepreneurs to make decision about product processes equipment etc in the post harvest uh, domain he has also been the chief technical advisor of tanusha foods he has apart from being an excellent academician and an administrator he has also been actively involved in mentoring and nurturing startups so here we have an a wonderful combination of an academician administrator and a, an entrepreneur and with his rich experience and diverse expertise in the area of agriculture we are all keen to hear from him uh, about the potentials opportunities in the area of agriculture and how entrepreneurship can impact the lives of millions of farmers and help improve their income through technology interventions through business process <laughs> interventions and through impactful entrepreneurship welcome professor patel okay thank you very much respected uh, professor tiwari the director of the institute my good friend dr h n mishra my friend my good friend and professor mrigank i thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to interact with the upcoming entrepreneurs who are participating in this program and namaskar 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 mishra ji namaskar welcome welcome I yeah you see that uh, my uh, what you call the background i have changed and you can see that uh, fresh vegetables are seen in that background yes, yes. Uh, and the topic of my presentation is agri food entrepreneurship for increasing the farmers income these vegetables show that when the farmer grows these vegetables in the field and he takes it to the market because he cannot store it these are all highly perishable having moisture content more than 80% he is forced to sell it at the price whatever he gets in the market because if he doesn't sell it and if he stays there for long time in the nearby market or monday by evening those vegetables will not look fresh and even he may not get any price for it but when you look at the price what he gets maybe about 3 rupees or 5 rupees a kilogram and the same vegetable when we buy it in kharagpur it is 50 to 60 rupees a kilogram and in mumbai and in kolkata it may be 80 rupees a kilogram so this difference between what farmer sells at and what consumer pays that is the different we want to bridge because the farmer should get more share in the consumer's money what consumer pays and for that essential part is to have the agro for entrepreneurship which is in the production catchment another interesting fact about uh, agri food entrepreneurship is because this country is 
uh, agro based country agrarian country we take pride in saying that we everybody is farmer in this country we are all coming from the farming background that means 60 to 70% of our population depends on agriculture and in spite of that the gdp from agriculture is very low gdp from agriculture is low because the agriculture produce doesn't get that price what it should be getting whereas the consumer of course pays very high money then the, because of this the agriculture or agriculturist or the people depending on agriculture they remain poor and 85% of the gdp is enjoyed by the urban population and so they become rich so finally what happens it creates a potential from farming community or from the rural areas to the urban areas for migration just like heat transfer just like moisture transfer this migration also it depends on that because 85 percent gdp in the is in the urban areas then that means there is a great potential for migrating from villages to the urban areas and what happens if the villagers come to urban areas they don't become they don't become rich after coming to urban areas they become urban poor and we have to stop this and for that agri food entrepreneurship is must another thing is that uh, we know that education has reached to the remotest corner of our country our country is very famous for its population and another one is the educational system of course because of that we are it superpower also because whatever may be the quality of education at least 5% or 10% of that is bright and that is why we are leading the world in the it sector but not everybody is like that because of the colleges and schools have reached to the villages it is very easy for the village youth to get the degree without studying also he gets the degree we see that most of the time in the television the copying is in mass and then pe uh, the people are climbing on the walls or windows of the school and providing uh, cheats to the students for getting passed and when these students they get passed and they get the degrees once they get the degrees they don't want to go back into agriculture they tell to their parents no 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 i don't want to go into agriculture because i am a graduate but what kind of graduate he is he is not employable graduate he cannot get a job and that way he cannot leave his village and if he leaves his village he is urban poor and these are the people those who are our mainly clients but they can go into this agri food entrepreneurship earn good money for themselves earn good living for themselves and also provide employment to the people from village and provide quality food to the consumers at affordable cost and if they can afford high then that means the farmer have to get, has to get more share out of it for himself with this background i will share my presentation and uh, i think for present i have to go to present now and uh, a window this is that window and i will go for powerpoint presentation a full uh, that uh, full screen okay you can see me properly mrigank yes sir. yes sir yes. yeah so my topic is with this background i go for agri food entrepreneurship to increase farmers income if you look at the indian perspective what india has got india has 2.4% of the total land area of the world that means we don't have much of the land area we are highly populated we are a small country compared to us and canada and australia and those those people and we have only 2.4% of the land available with us from the world and we have only 4% of the world's fresh water by which we survive our agriculture survives and in spite of the small amount of water and small amount of land available to us we support about 17% of the world population that is human population 17% of the world human population is supported by our country an equal number almost like 17% of the animal population of the world 
is also supported by in our country that means the agriculture is doing a tremendous contribution to this country by supporting the human as well as the animal population of that extent how much agriculture contributes i told you already that gdp from agriculture is only 15 percent though we provide food though farmer provides food to this huge population we are never less in food production but still the condition of our farmer is very poor and that we need to change and in agriculture it employs 49 percent workforce agriculture agro industries and agro processing industries are the largest job providers or the employment providers so it employs about 49 percent workforce and it sustains approximately 55 percent of the population earlier it was 70 percent it got reduced 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 as the cities grew and the people migrated from villages to the cities so now how we have about 55 percent population still to be supported on agriculture and what is our production if you look at our production figures the world will be surprised 285 million tons of food grains we grow every year this is the recent data one or two last years or like that and 310 million tons of fruits and vegetables we grow and almost whatever we we harvest for food and two times more biomass is produced when they grow these fruits and vegetables as well as food grains so that means that biomass also is produced in the very huge quantity India yes, ranks sir. second in the world food production. Yes, sir. Below India produces there is nothing visible, sir. Like uh, the screen has cut till there. Screen has cut. Okay. Yes. I think I will. Maybe then I will not go for slideshow. Now you can see that. Uh, no, sir. Like now. Now don't... what is the yes, what you see? Uh, now it is visible, sir. Yes. Sir. Now it is visible. Okay, I will put this yeah. like this. I will not make okay. the slide show because I need a full screen. Maybe because of that you could not see. Now I will go with this. Okay, it is okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, can someone respond? Yes. Okay. So, yes, sir. It is. Next slide. Yeah. If you look at the production, fruit production, our country is the second in the world after China. But we are first in many fruits, bananas. We are first producing 25.7% of the bananas of the world. Papayas, we are the first. 44% of the world's papaya we produce here. Mangoes, which is considered as a king of king of fruits, we produce about 40% of the world's mangoes in this country. And India produces unique produce with unique aroma, flavor, taste, nutritional properties, and health benefits. We produce jamun, which no other country can produce. We produce amla, we produce bale fruit, we produce pomegranate, we produce custard apple. When you compare our country with the developed countries, because in the US and Canada, when I was there, I used to tease those fellows. I used to tell them that you can go on Mars, you can go on moon, but you cannot produce our basmati, you cannot produce our turmeric, you cannot produce our guava, you cannot produce our bale fruit, you cannot produce our custard apple. You cannot produce our jackfruit. All these things we only can produce. And if we compare those countries with our country, you will see that our country is a blessed country. Because in those countries, they have to remain under snow for six months. You can imagine the country which remains under the snow for six months, how many crops they can grow. They can grow only one crop. And how many how many options they have for growing those crops? They have only five ticks, five six crops as option for them, and mostly they are cereal crops, like wheat, uh, like uh, maize, like uh, soybean, some pulses, and things like that. Whereas in this country, you name the crop, we grow it in this country. Throughout the year, we produce something in some part of the country, and you know that how many crops we can take? We can take three crops in a year. That credit goes to agricultural engineers because we have developed the machinery mechanization so that the farmer can immediately make available his land for the next crop. Because as soon as the first crop is over, he has to clean the land and make it available for the next crop. And as soon as the second crop is over, he has to make everything ready and go for the third crop. And that is possible because of the agricultural mechanization what we have.
and because of that 200 percent cropping intensity we have so our farmers have done their job they have produced a lot but in spite of that after production after harvest when it comes in the hands of the other people the losses are huge the post harvest losses in this country are 1 lakh crore per year and these losses they are really killing the farmers because they are all transferred to the farmer and not to anybody and that is why we have to reduce these losses we have to provide higher price to the farmer for his commodity what he grows and that can be possible only through agri food entrepreneurship so i told you about the losses but what are the reasons for losses reasons for losses are handling of raw produce through many stages of middleman when the price of 5 rupees a kilogram of the farmers produced becomes 80 rupees a kilogram in calcutta or 50 rupees a kilogram in kharagpur that is because there are so many middlemen are there who are taking their profit and where they are taking their profit out of it and if on the way if it is lost or the wastage takes place or the rotting takes place what will they do they will remove their rotten portion and they will increase the price of the end product so this handling of raw produce through many stages of middleman should be avoided you have the example of milk when the milkman comes from the village directly to your doorstep for handing over the milk you pay him 60 rupees and otherwise he would have got only 20 rupees if he had sold it in his village to the dairy so that means whenever there are less middlemen there are no middlemen no middlemen then your uh, losses are less and you get the higher price the farmer gets the higher price low level of processing mostly in urban areas which leads to wastage of valuable byproducts i told you that whenever we produce food and when we process it for our own consumption only one third of that comes for edible purpose and two third is a byproduct and this two third byproduct has got lot of uh, use for animal feed and many other purposes even many valuable pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals could be extracted from it if the byproducts are easily available and since these processing industries are in urban areas they are not interested in preserving the byproduct they are interested in only the main product and that is why the byproducts are lost they are rotten and they are not used then third thing is non availability of sufficient cold chain facilities friends all those western countries they are the temperate countries they are the cold countries by nature they have the cold chain available right from field to their refrigerators but at the same time they don't have option lot many options to grow fruits and vegetables which are considered to be high value food but in our country which is a tropical country here the temperature is very high when the fruits come for harvesting after harvesting if the fruit is not handled properly if it is exposed to heat and if it is not uh, washed immediately then that field heat it deteriorates the quality of the fruit and that is why we need to have the cold chain facilities which are appropriate for our conditions then fourth point is non availability of adequate equipment and machinery for small scale processing when we see that hundreds of crops hundreds of uh, products horticultural products are produced in this country each product has got its unique requirement of equipment required for processing because for making the taking the peel out of it for peeling the mango same equipment cannot be used for peeling uh, the base or peeling the lychee so that means all these equipments for all these products have to be developed in house by us because we grow it western countries they don't grow it so they won't never work on it and we have to work on it and we have to develop this small scale processing machinery which can be used for processing at production catchment the crops we grow then lack of facilities for training incubation and hand holding for entrepreneurs as the iitians feel that they should uh, form their own company like in it sector the companies are formed by the students when they are in third year similarly in food food business also when we see that some restaurants are doing really good job some uh, departmental stores are doing really wonderful job or they are earning a lot of money so our youth may be very much interested in going in that kind of entrepreneurship 
but how can they go in because it is not a family business unless it is family business nobody will teach you and uh, if you want to go and get the training in some other restaurants or shop or get it like that and they will not allow you to come so we need to have the facilities for training incubation and hand holding of entrepreneurs and that is what abic is doing at iit kharag that is agri business incubation center where the youth entre budding entrepreneur can come with bright idea and say that i have this idea i see that there is a potential for this product and i want your guidance for how to convert it into the commercial product and how to make it into an enterprise and that is what hand holding is required and fortunately now in almost all the agriculture universities and the research institutions and the institution like iit they have the agribusiness incubation center and the budding entrepreneurs they will definitely get help if they want to go into entrepreneurship and if higher there is entrepreneurship there will be higher processing and when there is a higher processing there will be better backward linkages with the farmers and there will be better post harvest management nothing will be lost on the way and there will be low level of losses that is why we propose or way i generally promote that production catchment processing should be there in one village there you should be a plant for process that as well as the produce from that village as well as from nearby villages and take process it and then sell the process product hello agro processing and production catchment can provide processed food of the highest quality affordable cost to consumer that is one it can ensure the traceability of raw materials used for processed product hence great scope for export and elite urban market you must might have heard the lectures on food safety in food safety this is very important point nowadays the traceability if you can know that from which field it was grown how it was grown and where it was processed the americans are willing to pay five times more the price compared to other products and this is why traceability can very well be achieved if we do the agro processing in production catch help effective backward linkages with farmers for processing their raw produce there will be effective backward linkages with the farmers because the farmers will grow the processable varieties which the plant needs and that is why there will be contract farming and that way the farmers will get the assured price and the farmers will know that they will have the assured price and the farmers income will increase if their productivity will increase otherwise farmers economics is very funny if the farmer produces x product from his field he gets 1000 rupees next year he works hard and produces 2x product there is no guarantee that he will get 2000 rupees and if he produces three times that is 3x then he will not get 3000 but maybe he may not get even 1000 rupees because he may not get even the cost of harvesting and that is what happens because there is no contract farm and unless there is contract farming there cannot be processing of raw produce in the production camp so that is why nowadays whatever discussion is going on about the farm laws these farm laws are very useful for having the production catchment processing set up in our country then fourth point is shorten the supply chain increase the profitability of the farmer and ultimately increase the gdp from agriculture and reduce the poverty shortening the supply chain i gave you the example of milk there is a supply chain is means that is a producer or if he himself is not a producer he purchase it from the farmers and gives it to you at your doorstep so there is a shortest of the chain and that is why his profitability is more and he in fact to have the assured supply of milk he will pay 5 rupees more to the farmer per liter compared to what farmer gets in the day then it will reduce the post harvest losses and increase the availability of the by products for animal feed then entrepreneurship is such a thing in agriculture that with the 10 lakh investment in uh, cp cfet ludhiana we had conducted the study from the secondary data and we found that each 10 lakh invested we provided two direct jobs and six indirect jobs so that means eight jobs can be made available from the rural industry having 10 lakh rupee investment whereas if you look at this that means if it is a cold store there will be three people will get the job whereas all other industries that is manufacturing irrigated waters pickles and chutneys and confectionery items they can provide up to 14 jobs if we look at other industries for example if there is a plant of uh, maruti manufacturing the car manufacturing in your city or in your town they it will its investment will be maybe maybe 500 crores of rupees 
but how many jobs it can provide hardly 100 jobs for the very skilled people and they also will come from bombay and pune whereas very few labor jobs will be provided whereas if you go for agro entrepreneurship you will have tremendous potential to get the jobs next one is value addition value addition you can see that is the highest order in agro in agriculture or food because you see that 5 rupee worth of farmers produce becomes 50 rupees worth of per kilogram yes as soon as it goes to the town or city and this value addition is also in the processed products i always give an example if you go to the small shop you can get a cup of tea for 5 rupees but when you go to the five star restaurant you have to pay 50 rupees or 70 rupees for that so is it the more quantity of tea you drink no the similar quantity of drink only thing is that the way it is presented you pay the price for it and that is what is the scope in agri entrepreneurship next is says that uh, food processing in the states you can see that where your state belongs and then why food processing has a tremendous potential now because of the increasing middle class husband and wife both are working and they would like to have very fast cooking ready to eat ready to cook product are preferred and then environmental sustainability of course our country is uh, bound to have uh, the commitment made for that that we will have less of the spoilage improved understanding of dietary requirements nowadays people are very much cautious that what they should eat and what they should not and when they are choosing in eating they will pay better price and another thing is that nowadays the wealth has been generated in our country because of the increasing middle class the salaries has gone up and hardly 5 to 10% of our salary we spend in the food when we spend such a small amount on food we will be very choosy and we would like to go for the processed and nicely packed product otherwise when we started our jobs almost 50% of our salary used to go for food then it will also encourage breeding and cultivation of processable varieties because farmers can grow anything if there is an assured bag buyback guarantee then farmer can grow anything whatever you want then it will be increased awareness about nutraceutical and functional foods is happening and uh, thanks to corona corona has brought everything stand still but agriculture has not come to stand still because food requirement can never vanish and that is why every other industry was closed whereas the agriculture industry was going on and then food was needed to our doorstep and it was provided by the farmers and that is how the now and then along with that we also understood that our own food that has greater immunity than the fast food of the western countries and we see that corona has more impact on those countries whereas it is least impact in our country because the kind of food we eat kind of nutraceuticals we take kind of functional foods we take without naming the nutraceutical and functional foods we keep on consuming them we consume a lot of ginger we consume a lot of turmeric we consume all spices and all those things they are immunity boosters and that is what now there is a creation of awareness and those are all uh, products are produced in this country so that means if you process and package it properly it has not only demand in our own country in urban markets but it has a tremendous demand for export that is why i am because there are many technologies that have been developed throughout the country many icr institutes many I, uh, universities they have uh, uh, developed the technologies and but i have selected few and i feel that there is a tremendous scope for entrepreneurship development and third year students of uh, undergraduate from iit kharagpur can think about doing this on the side business only little investment they can do this and get hands on experience and how they can make profit as well as they can benefit the farmer by doing that i think i see that there is a krishi vaikalya some uh, ngo is there nearby kharagpur and uh, many students are contributing in development of that village i see that development is mostly in the production sector if they can take up this some of these in uh, ideas of uh, food entrepreneurship and put it up there that will also be an example for others to follow so the first one first technology which i would like to suggest is soybean and groundnut milk nowadays there is a lot of problem and people are very cautious about taking the animal milk because of the injections they are provided to the animals and there is a maybe something added they have they have a fear that the milk is not pure and that is why the plant based milk they would like to prefer another thing is that this plant based milk they are enriched with phytochemicals micronutrients and they can fight the lifestyle diseases like diabetes chds osteoporosis menopausal syndrome and blood pressure these are the diseases we get 
after the age of 50 and almost in every house we have the diabetic patient or blood pressure patient nowadays and the doctors also prescribe that why don't you get the soya milk and but it is not available if the small plant of like this costing about three to five lakhs and about having 20 liter 200 liters of capacity per day and 200 liters of capacity per day means it is almost like uh, keeping 10 cows or buffaloes and you know that for keeping 10,000 buffaloes, how much uh, st uh, struggle you have to do, how much work it is involved. Whereas this machine, you can handle it properly with the quality control and every glass of milk will taste the same as that of other glass. Then uh, soybean is very good for health, doctors prescribe it. And even US, there is a health claim approved for soybean and they say that 25 grams of soya protein, that means about 50 grams of soybean if you consume per day, you will not have to worry about these lifestyle diseases which I explained in earlier slide. So to have that, we have developed an extrusion expelling technology. What we do in this extruder, we crush the soybean at very high temperature for a short time and all the additional factors are removed and the soybean is crushed in the slushy material. Then it is put into the expeller below and then 70% oil is taken out, which is the natural oil from soybean with having all the uh, nutritional properties that can be consumed as such, just like groundnut milk. Whereas the cake which we get is having 6 to 8% oil and that is a medium fat soya flour after grinding. It can be added into a chapati, it can be added into a pakoda, samosa and it can be blended to have the higher protein content available. Then after doing this, we thought of instead of having two machines, why not we have only one machine? That is an integral extrusion expelling unit we have developed at CIE Bhopal. This I'm showing because if some entrepreneurs are interested in manufacturing this machine, they are also most welcome. And here, the first portion is extruder and second portion is the expeller. And in one machine, we can get both extrusion done, removing the intrusional factors and then removing the oil and getting the medium fat soya flour and oil. The garlic processing machines. The garlic is a food which we use a lot in our households and garlic has got immune boosting property. Garlic is widely used to prevent the several conditions linked with the blood system and heart. And garlic is also used for prevention of many types of cancers. And that is why in our country, without telling these benefits, we are consuming garlic in the large quantity. And though we are consuming garlic, we do not get the processed product ready to, you can, ready to use garlic in our shops. So this is the three machines we used, garlic bulb breaker, garlic peeler and garlic flaking machine. These three machines are used and they are developed at CTA Udaipur, our agriculture university. And then after that, we prepare the dried garlic slices. If they are made available to the habas and restaurants, they would also would like to have this product because they also need one person to clean the garlic and make it available for cooking. So this is very good ready to cook material for home, also for the restaurants and habas. Then the next is mango processing unit. For example, we uh, used to make pickle almost in every house earlier. Now we don't make it because we cannot cut the mangoes because we don't have that equipment with us. Earlier it used to be in the villages for with one or two people and it used to rotate throughout the village and they used to get in lieu of that some five mangoes or 10 mangoes for using that machine. But it is not available so that has stopped. And even the small scale achar making industries have also stopped. Though there are many nice recipes are available because many times we feel that my grandmother makes very good achar and if I use that recipe to scale up, I think there will be tremendous potential on how to scale up. So he, these are the machines developed at IHR Bangalore. First is the mango peeler. Raw mango is peeled. Second is the mango slicer. The mangoes are sliced. And then third is the mango cutter in the cubes. So these cubes can be kept into the gold store or the freezer, minus 10, minus 20 degrees Celsius temperature. And if you just write it on the Amazon that I have these things available, I think you will get even demands from abroad for getting this product and they can use it for whatever way they want. They can use it for making a char. They can make it for making panna, that is raw mango juice. And so many other things can be made. And if this product is available, because many a times in food processing, people think that raw material and end product, but they don't think in between, but that is not the case. If you go to the ketchup industry and say that you take our tomato 
they will say that tomato is not their raw material. They want tomato puree. If you can set up a plant in the village for making puree, put it in the cold store and make it available for the world to get it, I think there will be tremendous market for that. Same thing for juicers. For making juice, they don't want raw mangoes. They want pulp out of mango. Same thing for achar making industry. They don't want the raw mango. They want the cut cubes in the cube form. And there is a tremendous potential for this kind of industry and which doesn't, uh, the cost of the machinery is not very high. Then guava bar. Guava is a wonderful fruit of our country. We produce guava in two seasons in a year. And most throughout the country, the guava is produced. And uh, they, they have different quality. For example, guava from Allahabad is a red in color, whereas guava from other places, it will be white in color. And guava is a rich source of potassium, vitamin C and vitamin A. And if we can pulp this guava in the production catchment itself, that pulp can be used for making this kind of products. And these kind of products, they are much better than junk food of chocolates, which we generally give in the lunch boxes of our children when they go to school. So instead of that, we will provide this if it is available in the market. And this is a business which is also low cost and young entrepreneurs can go into this. Then the next one is Moringa processing. Moringa is a superfood. You know that uh, actually we have, I have experience with my wife that whenever her HB goes down, hemoglobin, if you consume this Moringa for a few days, it is again comes up. So that means it is a good source of iron and its viability is very high. And what we need in this? Something for cleaning the leaves or the drumsticks and then chopping, then using this dryer and this grinder and making powder out of it. Once you make a powder, that can also be sold. You can make the tablets out of it. That also can be sold. We can make capsules out of it. That also can be sold. If there are seeds of Moringa's, then oil can be taken out and that also has tremendous pharmaceutical application. If it is available, people would like to use it. Then crushed tomato technology. You know the example of tomatoes that many a times we see that the farmers are throwing the tomatoes on the street because they are not getting the price. It is because of the same economics I told you that a farmer producing more and getting less price is not a new thing in this country. But is in that, what is the solution? If you have the crushed tomato technology, from 3 kg, you can get 1 kg of crushed tomato. And with little investment, this is a technology developed by our IIHR center. Indian Institute of Horticulture Research. And when you make the crushed tomato, these tomatoes can be consumed or can be used by housewives in place of fresh tomatoes because she has to cut it. And if suppose all the tomatoes not consumed in one day, then the next day they get uh, bad. Few of them, they rot. And then only few are remaining for use. Instead of that, if you can get the crushed tomato, it is a ready to cook product. And even dhabas and restaurants, they would like to have it. If they get it, they don't have to get the fresh tomatoes and cut them. And this is a wonderful thing. And even Western countries, if you see, the fresh tomatoes are much expensive, whereas the crushed tomato is very cheap. In our country also, that can happen. If there are many industries come up in the tomato growing region for crushed tomato as well as the tomato puree, and that will also be input for other industries for making variety of ketchups. Today, you are getting ketchup from Maggi and toward getting ketchup from uh, Kisan. These are multinationals and multinationals, they are getting their puree from China and US, whereas our tomatoes are rotting on the street just because we don't make a puree because they we cannot complain against them also because they need a puree as a raw material for making ketchup. And if you don't do it, they will try to get it from outside. Definitely. We cannot stop them. Same thing for this processed product or ready to cook product. If you don't make it, your upper middle class will buy it when it comes from outside. So better rise to the occasion and go into this kind of industry. Next is powdered beetroot. Beetroot is a wonderful produce of our country or and then we use it for salad and uh, almost about the one fourth is consumed and three fourth is wasted and thrown. Instead of that, if you can make a powder out of it, that can work as an ingredient for many other uh, products, even pharmaceutical products, health products. And even RTS can be made out of it. It is beneficial for blood, heart and digestive system because whatever is ready, it is high in antioxidants. And this is wonderful. And we need to preserve it by making powder out of it. This technology has been developed at Swift Ludhiana and we can have uh, the one week entrepreneurship development program there. 
and the training people can get. This is osmo dehydration of kino segments because in case of uh, grains, when they come for harvest, they are of the same quality. So uh, harvester can go into it or combine can go into it and harvest and put it together like wheat. We don't see the wheat very big and very small. But whereas in fruits, it comes in three grades. The very good, the big ones, then second is small and third one is very small. And the big ones get a very good price and it goes for a sale. Whereas grade two and grade three, it, it is a liability on the farmer's head that where he can sell it. And if he sells it, it will be one rupee or two rupee a kilogram. And friends, this can be processed into osmo dehydrated product like this because we have opened it up, you know, taken out the segments, remove the seeds with the toothpicks and it is a highly labor intensive small unit packaging unit if you can have when they we remove the seeds then put them into the sugar syrup put it for six hours and then uh, after the six hours you dry them in the dryer regular dryer what i had shown in earlier slide and this can be kept for six months every day it can be given into the lunch box of the kids for taking to the school whenever you want juice you add few segments Osmodiated segments and water, mix it in the grindy, you get a juice, pulpy juice out of it. And this is a very simple technology, and anybody can start it with very little investment. Next is mechanical dewatering and drying of onion. Onion also is like the garlic. Every day, our housewife has to cut it. Even hotels and restaurants, they need one person to cut it. But when we can consuming fresh, for salad, only 5% of this produce and 95% goes into curry making. Why not we can dehydrate it and make it into powder or flex? And we have developed a technology at CFET where 60% of water is first extracted and that water or juice of onion can be used for some pharmaceuticals uh, produce. For example, if you look into the literature, they say that this juice, when it is applied on the bald head, even the hair will start growing. So that means it is a very good material for shampoo making. And when remaining portion, when it is dried, it can be used for making masalas and also for making different cooking dishes every day. The minimal processing of pomegranate. Friends, this pomegranate is a second food which is on the way to get nutri nutritional claim in US by US FDA. And the first one was soybean and second one is going to be pomegranate. Why it is because? Because there is a saying that an apple a day keeps doctor away. But whereas our anar, which is pomegranate, ek anar so bimar. That means the strength of the anar is so much that it can even uh, treat 100 patients. And for this, we do not get any processed product in the market. We have to have only the fresh pomegranate, open it up, and many times it may not be read, and then take it out. And then that is why we don't consume it that much, even in the season. But if we get this, the aerials in this kind of packaging and if these aerials they stay firm for 16 days this is the technology we have developed at CFET. so by this we can keep this aerial 16 days as fresh in the refrigerator and that way they can be transported from the different places and maybe maybe made available on the in the restaurants in the airports on the railway stations and people will consume them something like groundnut they consume today the mechanical pomegranate aerial extractor also we have developed. This is the machine which does the job of five quintals of uh, uh, pomegranate seed extraction per hour with efficiency of 90 to 94 percent and only one or two percent damage takes place in this. Then we have the chili powder, chili powder processing and that is green chili powder. So far we have only consumed red chili powder and that is our compulsion because the farmer cannot process it and that is why he makes it red on the tree and then afterwards harvest it and dries it for one or two months and we grind it and take it. While grind, drying, what might be happening that opens and drying, we can understand. So instead of that, if we can do the green chili processing, we can get the green chili powder at the June green chili puree and that way both these products are very high nutrition and very easy to use because ready to cook products. And this can also be, you can get hands-on training from CFET Ludhiana. Next is aloe vera gel extractor. Nowadays, we, we see that aloe vera is uh, being promoted by Ramdeo Baba like anything. It can be a cosmetic, you can drink aloe vera juice for the purpose. And juice, aloe vera. It's very simple. We have developed machine by which 
you will not get bitterness because upper portion and bottom portion is removed and only gel is extracted by this machine and then it can directly be used after pasteurization for to sell for the people to consume in different way this is a simple shrink packaging technology for fruits and vegetables when we look at the cost of fruits and vegetables they are almost 40 to 50 rupees a kilogram when we see that 40 50 rupees a kilogram one fruit or one uh, this uh, shimla mirch cost about 5 rupees or 10 rupees and if you spend some 25 cent 25 paise for making the shrink packaging of each fruit you can extend the shelf life by two times to four times and this is a simple machine which cost only 70000 rupees i think four students together can come and form a company for fresh fruits and vegetables and then package the fruits like this and sell it in the market and they can immediately see within a month or two how much they have earned so this is a hands on experience for third year graduates of our agriculture engineering or for any engineering for that matter because for uh, this food is required by everybody and uh, in food only not only food engineer so ag engineers are coming into food there are many it professionals that are coming back to the country and coming into the food processing business the next one is our bear bear also can be osmotic inherited and you can get this kind of products and also the sweetness of the jaggery we know that now the people don't want to consume uh, sugar and sugar cost 40 rupees whereas uh, this jaggery it cost about 150 rupees a kilogram i buy it at 150 rupees a kilogram but when i buy 150 rupees a kilogram it should be sold in this form either it is a powdered jaggery either it is a liquid jaggery or it is a cubical jaggery and for this you can get a hands on training at iisr lucknow extrusion extrusion is a simple process by expanding the product especially it was developed for maize earlier and now we have developed a machine in collaboration with the industry which cost only 2 lakh rupees and its capacity 25 kg per hour we can get the millets and fruit powders together and make this kind of uh, puffy balls or expanded balls and this they could be coated with chocolate or anything else and it with a small investment one can come out with very very likable product which can be sold even in the super supermarkets or five star markets the cryogenic grinder you know that during this covid we have survived because of our spices earlier we were thinking that eating spices is not good for our health that is just because we were not processing them properly if you only dry grind the spice where the temperature goes up to 45 to 95 degrees celsius definitely the quality of the powder will be bad but whereas if you preserve the quality just like we did earlier with the wet grinding but substitute is cryogenic grinding this cryogenic grinding the work was initiated by dr kk singh at iit kadakpur and then at uh, sifet ludhiana we developed a machine which was indigenous costing over 25 lakh rupees and having capacity of 25 kg per hour this cryogenic grinder preserves the quality of the powder as if it is in the raw material and that is why all our spices should be consumed that way then put in isolate and concentrate production for soybean de oil cake soybean de oil cake has about 50% protein and we are selling it at very throwaway price of 10 to 12 rupees a kilogram if that can be used as a raw material and if we will produce the protein isolates and protein concentrates from it by using this pilot plant i think there will be tremendous uh, import uh, substitution in this because most of the time protein isolates are imported from abroad because we cannot set up a big unit which costs about 10 to 20 crores whereas this small plant costing maybe about 1 crore of rupees can be set up and you can make this product which is very much required for the industry which substitutes the protein in their different products once we know that we want to have this kind of industries we need to have cold chain established as i told you but cold chain means what we need to have a cold room in the village or on the farm where the fresh produced of that day can be stored so this is a very low cost evaporative cool structure where there are two walls in between the walls there is a sand and the water is trickling on it and the temperature is reduced by 5 to 8 degrees when when in the summer whatever your room temperature is there below that 8 degrees the temperature can be achieved in this and the product can be stored for 3 to 4 days so the each day's harvest of the vegetables farmer can keep it there and then after a week can go to the market and sell it at proper price and you can see this table that how ordinary room whereas the ec cool evaporative cooled room can extend the shelf life for spinach it is from 2 days to 4 days whereas for cauliflower from 2 days to 11 days and the same thing for uh, pulp, for example if you want to make pulp at the rural uh, area at the at the uh, production catchment pulping industry 
or puree industry, then you need to keep that product into the minus temperature or the refrigeration conditions. And for this, this is the unit which is available, which costs about three to four lakh rupees, and that way it can be stored. Then coming to the conclusion, my friends, India produces variety of nutritious fruits and vegetables. It processed has growing upper middle class market and also the potential for export and the ability to convert the farmer's condition. It can provide two direct jobs and single indirect jobs with each 10 lakh invested. Strength strengthening the primary processing and value addition at production catchment will definitely increase the farmer's income substantially and it will also reduce the post harvest losses. It will be gain gain situation for the entrepreneur as well as for the farmers. And at the end, I have an appeal to make to all the participants, those who are listening to my lecture, please consume one seasonal fruit a day because we are the country where the fruits are available in plenty, but we don't consume them. There is a, if you have a the fruit bag in your hand and if you are going home, the people will ask whether there is any patient in your house. So we had a conception or we had a thinking that only patients use the fruits and fruits and not the healthy man. If we start consuming one seasonal fruit a day, 125 crore people consuming one seasonal fruit a day, I think it will reduce the post harvest losses by 5%. Then second thing is that when you greet someone on their birthday or on the anniversary, please greet with a basket of fruits. Rather than taking the greeting card or rather than taking the bouquet, please take this basket of fruits so they will be compelled to eat them. And that way our mission of having one fruit a day for everybody in the country will be accomplished. Then third appeal is consume fruit jam to make milkshakes because it makes very good milkshake in the milk in a mixy you add two spoons of milk jam and then shake it well or mix it well you get a very good milkshake and uh, why I'm telling about jam because the fruit jam is the simplest processing technology by which the fruits can be processed and if you can increase the fruit jam consumption in this country we can indirectly save on the losses of fruits and fruits valuable fruits and that is why please try to consume maximum of the fruit jam which is made by the local industries multinationals of course they will make it but for them the pulp is from india is not a criteria they can import the pulp from other countries and make it for you and instead if you make it from the small fellows they will have the our fruits and vegetables used for they will make the pulp out of it and then make a jam out of it and then jam will be used for your everyday milkshake with this I thank you all for giving me this opportunity for presenting my views about the food processing entrepreneurship for increasing the farmer's income. And I think I am well within the time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for the wonderful discussion and uh, uh, so many examples that you presented. I am uh, looking forward to participants' questions. So I'll welcome any questions from the participants. Uh, you would like to interact with uh, Dr. Patel? Yes, uh, uh, Professor Mrigang, I have Hello. a question. Yes, uh, Mr. Jain, Mr. Ashish Jain can first speak. Uh, Patel, I want to ask you that the garlic flags are made, what percentage of your percentage is made? If you have asked the details of your city, you will ask all the nitty-gritties of the city. Udaipur, ko puchenge, to aapko sab उसका मुझे लगता है कि इतनी अच्छी लेवल की प्रोसेसिंग अगर की जाए, so there will not be any loss. But the processing अगर बैड हो गई थोड़ी सी, अगर सेटिंग्स ठीक नहीं रही मशीन्स की, तो फिर लॉसेस होंगे और वो आपको डिस्कार्ड करने पड़ेंगे. और वो भी आप खाने में उपयोग कर सकते हैं. प्यूरी अपन किसी भी चीज़ की और जो भी दब के प्यूरी बन जाए, जिसका गुदा आप अच्छी तरह से निकाल पाए, उसकी आप प्यूरी कर सकते हैं। और अदरवाइज मैं तो कहूँगा कि प्यूरी करने के लिए किसी भी फ्रूट में you may have to do two unit operations। जैसे आपको जैकफ्रूट का अगर प्यूरी बनाना है, तो आपको जैकफ्रूट का जो फल है, उसमें से सीड निकाल के पहले उ or the mixer kind of thing. And thereafter, in the other way, you have to make a puree. Puree of her fruit or her vegetable. Yes, what is the smoothies? The smoothies are puree, right? How many times can we preserve it? 
एक्चुअली अगर माइनस टेम्परेचर रखेंगे तो काफी दिन प्रिजर्व कर सकते हैं अगर आपको उसमें प्रिजर्वेटिव डालने की जरूरत पड़ी तो आप उसको भी डाल सकते हैं है ना तो आपको ये जो इंक्यूबेशन सेंटर्स पे जब आप जाएंगे नियरेस्ट आई थिंक दिस हैंड होल्डिंग कैन बी डन बाई देम यू योर सेल्फ कैन लुक इन टू इट दैट हाउ लॉन्ग यू कैन कीप इट आई थिंक वी जनरली से दैट प्रोसेस प्रोडक्ट आर सेफ फॉर थ्री मंथ्स बट सम ऑफ देम दे गो फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स ऑल्सो विथ प्रॉपर पैकेजिंग इन टेट्रा पैक थिंग्स लाइक दैट एंड ऑल्सो विथ सम ट्रीटमेंट Alexa, switch on the light. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, Mr. Bharat uh, Bharat Sharma. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, Professor Mikram. Uh, uh, Hello, Dr. Patel. Thank Hello. you so much for the informative uh, information. I have uh, a question. Yes, please. Okay, as you mentioned that for uh, uh, hmm? uh, the. Hello. Are you yes, yes, me? Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, you are audible. Please go ahead. Okay. Please For ahead. spices, we have cryogenic grinding process, which does not alters the nutritional value of right. the spices at all. But when I look at the fresh fruit or vegetable segment, where yeah. we have been told that uh, juices are not better than it's better to have them raw rather than juices because because of the fiber and content, etc. so if, if my question is if i want to work on the potential about for post harvest uh, small scale processing for uh, things like onion tomato or garlic rings or green chili powder as you mentioned is there is is there any kind of a basic difference between the nutritional value and what will be the shelf life uh, of these products like Actually, do we need any yeah, kind yeah. of a specific temperature requirement yeah, or yeah, storage yeah, facility definitely because actually what happens because i told you that most of the processed products they have life of 3 months yeah because if it is well dried product mm -hmm. you can keep it for long without the chemical application very true otherwise very true. there are permitted preservatives are available in the market which you can use mm -hmm. another thing is that there are two uh, uh, school of thoughts for the processed product mm -hmm. in first thing we say that the processed product uh, some nutrition might be lost and that is true also mm -hmm. but many a times those nutritions we get it from other sources okay for example rice when we consume mm -hmm. the uh, polishing of that rice that aluron layer which is the rice bran that is nutritious but it goes for making oil and we get it from that source very good because with aluron layer brown rice we cannot consume and digest it that easily yes sir and that is why to have the convenience of cooking convenience of eating these products are developed another thing is in case of juices mm -hmm. you have two types of juices one is a clarified juice and was a one is a pulpy juice true we like pulpy juice and okay. pulpy juice has lot many uh, things which are there in the raw material like fiber whereas if it is a clarified juice then it is just like uh, double refined oil mm -hmm. double refined oil when you have then you expect only the fat value of it true but no other phytochemicals mm -hmm. but when you take the cold pressed oil you have the phytochemicals also but that oil will be little turbid okay so this yes, is sir. the choice of these things and these are the values brought out by the westerners now they created this processing methods and they created that kind of oil and now we are consuming it today because it is easy to process and handle in the bulk yes sir i agree i agree so uh, but when you mentioned that a certain amount of preservative can be used for storage to or to increase the shelf life of a product in case of a fruit or a vegetable post harvested product uh, there is another fact which goes on that if there is a pre preservative in any kind of a product it means that it is chemically affected it is not like that you have to educate because today any processed product is get in the market tropical juice it yes. has those preservatives mentioned yes. but many a times these preservatives of either citric acid yes acetic acid yes and they are uh, from the same uh, sources from the vegetables they are produced okay? Okay. okay and only thing is that in that juice if it is not more it is added and then it is made to preserve for long time got it okay thank you thank you we are ready we can take one more question from mr sudhir salve hi hi sir this is sudhir salve i am from nasik i i am 
Huh. I am interested in uh, uh, onion powder. So because because there is a lot of bulk uh, uh, on, onion production in the Nasik. So I am interested in uh, those kind of uh, manufacturing process. So can you guide me how to process for that one? Definitely, because I am from Maharashtra. And when okay. I see that in Nasik, there is no onion processed. When I see in Jalgaon, no banana processed. I feel like crying there. If it was Punjab, this would have been taken care already by those people. So if you want to go for dehydration of onion with this mechanical intervention, please go to Sifet Ludhiana. Because what I did when I was a director there, I found that most of the time food processing doesn't grow because we don't provide training to our people. Because in the production segment, if something new comes up, the farmers are well aware about it. And if you give them the seed, they will immediately pick up and increase their production, though may not be fully potential because they don't go with a total package of practices. But in case of our processing industry or mechanization, it is something like learning to drive a motorcycle. If I show you video for six months and say that now you are trained to drive the motorcycle, it will not be available. It will not be possible. You need to sit on the motorcycle, drive it for some time, get a practice or maybe fall in between. And then you become a trained driver. Similar to that, for the food processing industries, whatever technologies our scientists are developing, that is why we I had developed a one week entrepreneurship development program. It, I call it as a technology based entrepreneurship development program. So entrepreneur can come learn about the raw material quality, learn about the end product quality, learn about how to run the machines, learn about how to make the product, how to package it and how to further market it. And this seven days training is very essential for every entrepreneur. Today, with my, my I say I think I say that I'm, I'm instrumental to it. I'm not a party to it because I was a director of it. I was a training coordinator at CIE Bhopal. And because of that, this idea of entrepreneurship development training programs came up in our mind. And then we have about more than 450 soybean processing units in majority in Punjab. And whereas about 300, these small technologies have been adopted by more than 300 people. And but that only after taking entrepreneurial development program training from CFAT, CIAE, IIHR, or wherever I have mentioned about the technologies they have developed. And also, uh, IIT Kharagpur, now they have the incubation center. So you can go out with the idea there and say that, sir, I would like to have some training here. I think they will welcome you to there. And then uh, you can have hands on experience on making that product, handling that product, preserving that product. Thank you. But, but sir, sure. how to, uh, sir, how to sell it? I, I, I can. Uh, we can develop that manufacturing process. Are, but, are, bhai, I, this is a wonderful question you ask. It is a sleeping market we have. Actually, if somebody had told you some 10 years back that you can sell the water bottle for 20 rupees, could you believe it? No. no. But today we are buying bottle for 20 rupees and which cost only 1 rupee for the bottle and 50 paise for water. Dead rupee ka water material aap das 20 rupee mein kharitte ho aur market kyun hai kyunki wo available hai because unless you make it available from where the people will buy it so it is something like anda pehle hai ya murghi pehle so isliye don't worry about the market there is a sleeping market there is a potential market and i always say like in marathi there is a saying gazra ji pungi vazli to vazli ne to khali so this okay. is a such a low risk business that you start it and if immediately you don't get the market, you distribute it. Even if you distribute it, you won't lose it. Why tea was made available to us free? And today we are paying 300 rupees a kilogram. Is it not? The similar kind of thing you can do for your product in your own vicinity, locality. And get the higher money from the upper market, which knows that how to buy the process food, Mumbai market. Hmm. Sir, you answer your question? Sir. Uh, yeah, Vani Bala. Sir, uh, uh, good evening, sir. Vanita Balachandran from Chennai, sir. I have a, one question, sir. So, sir, you said the cold storage unit, the small type prototype is available for 1,500 US dollars. Is that just a model or it is available commercially, sir? Because we have a lot of marginal farmers who are growing the vegetables, sir. This, you can uh, get the drawing from Sifet, Ludhiana, and you can get it constructed from your mason. And it costs only that much. What is the capacity of that cold storage? So how many tons I can store in the afternoon? It is two ton capacity. 
two oh, tons okay, of vegetables. Sir. So that means one okay. big farmer can have it, or cluster of farmers can have it. And if you ex extend the capacity of it, it's the only thing is that you have to make it into three rooms. That's all. Concept is same. Just like you are uh, desert cooler in the in the summer season, you know. We use the desert cooler. If one is not enough, we put two of them in a hall, right? Yes, sir. Hmm. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Welcome. So uh, we all thank Dr. R. T. Patel for spending the evening with us and sharing so many wonderful ideas. It was very informative talk for all of the participants. I'm pretty sure all the budding and aspiring entrepreneurs over here have greatly benefited from this discussion. And sir, your association with IIT Kharagpur as well as the uh, Agri Business Incubation Center will be very important uh, and helpful for our growth here. So we are looking forward to your long-term association. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So uh, next, uh, we have our second speaker today. Uh, Mr. Tosif Khan, who is the founder and CEO of Gramophone, one of the very successful startups which has uh, come out of IIT Kharagpur. He's an IIT Kharagpur alumnus and uh, in fact happens to be my batchmate. So I'm very glad to welcome him on today's session. So let me start with a very brief introduction. Uh, Tosif got his bachelor's degree in agriculture and food engineering from IIT Kharagpur in 2009 and MBA from IIM Ahmedabad in 2014. He had industry stint and he worked in the corporate, uh, also in startups like Cropin as a vice president. And soon after that, he started Gramophone. Gramophone tries to create a difference in farming by bringing timely information technology and right kind of inputs to achieve better yields for farmers. The endeavor is to bring the best products and knowledge to the farmers. Gramophone is like a one stop solution for all kinds of inputs for the farmers. Farmers can buy genuine crop protection, crop nutrition, seeds, implements and agri hardware at their doorstep. The main agenda of, uh, of uh, Gramophone is to, is to promote technology that can remove information asymmetry in the agriculture system. Through their platform, farmers can access localized package of practice, crop advisory, weather information coupled with best products to grow. So with their extensive experience on the field, they have been able to guide, nurture large number of farmers in Madhya Pradesh and they have been able to receive multi-million dollars of funding from the venture capital and the company is growing up fast and scaling up their operations in recent years. So we are welcome to us. We are all keen to hear from his experience and the story of Gramophone so far. Welcome to us. Thanks, thanks uh, uh, for the introduction. And it's always like pleasure to uh, be uh, back to the uh, roots where you started and uh, uh, yeah so I think I would uh, quickly like uh, uh, give a brief introduction a journey about us and would try and make the session more interactive uh, uh, for everybody so if there are any questions you can like type in uh, uh, or like ask directly in between also uh, so just to basically uh, st start, uh, so from the name in itself, uh, when uh, 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 Gramophone, when we were like choosing uh, in 2016, when we uh, were starting this uh, uh, company, uh, so the primary uh, thought process was that uh, this is something which is related to villages and uh, uh, internet would play a big like role in the next like decade. decade. Uh, uh, by the time when we were actually like thinking of starting this, geo had not happened. But still, like the assumption was that connectivity will not be a problem. So therefore, uh, the <clears throat> main idea is to basically connect the rural uh, ecosystem uh, 
uh, via phone kind of a methodology. It could be over call. It could it could be over like apps uh, or uh, and try and basically solve for the problems of the farmer. Uh, so that was the basic like thought with which we started in two, 20 like 16 and um, uh, being an agriculture like a graduate in itself so there was a decent like understanding about what kind of problems are there and we came more with an engineering kind of a background where we could like build uh, solutions that could basically like work at scale uh, that's the expertise probably like which uh, um, I and uh, uh, other members of the founding like team brought in. Um, so uh, the primary like business that we are in right now, uh, uh, as Mrigang has rightly like mentioned, that we work more on the uh, input side of the entire like value chain, and uh, uh, it has been like four years, uh, almost like five years of journey now. Um, we have worked with uh, 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 more than like five lakh farmers uh, till now. They have been using our system uh, to get information. And uh, the uh, one thought process when we in the very early like days uh, uh, realized that uh, I think only like information uh, providing that to the farming like ecosystem uh, was not solving for the uh, uh, productivity related like problems or like maybe uh, the larger objective where we want to basically like maximize the <coughs> income of the farmer so there, therefore today if i have to like define our work in uh, simple like words then we act as a a, a doctor uh, for the farmer and we also like act as a medical store for the same like guy so in the entire like supply chain uh, which is pretty much like broken there are manufacturers of all these products at one end and uh, uh, each of the manufacturer has speciality probably around seed uh, or like crop protection crop nutrition products and everybody more or less like claims that if you use my product the production would be uh, best but typically if you look at agriculture then uh, it's a combination of right from pre like sowing activities during the sowing time then vegetative growth stage then like flowering fruition and finally like harvest so there was is no like link in uh, the current like supply chain which is basically uh, responsible for end to end management of the crops so that is what gramophone basically does so, and we have built like various technical uh, products uh, where uh, with data we have basically brought in all the information around agronomy build intelligence over there based on like soil data based on weather data what kind of pest and disease problems come at different stages of a crop and how we can basically localize and personalize it at the farmer's farm level if he has multiple farms on which three four crops are growing he can basically use our system to manage that uh, through uh, our <coughs> platform and uh, i think the basic like understanding in the early days when we were uh, starting was uh, that he doesn't like farmer is typically considered that he would not be able to use a smartphone so therefore uh, to solve for this problem we built a solution which was more over a call uh, in the early days uh, and then we graduated as the uh, uh, i think internet penetration like has increased and is increasing right now we have graduated through a web and an app based platform and then we have built last mile like presence as well by opening up certain like physical centers uh, where the farmer can uh, basically uh, which builds the trust of the farmer uh, so uh, in uh, a total like today uh, uh, we have seen like people who have been associated with us over this period of time they uh, <coughs> have uh, uh, gotten like benefits up to 20 to 30 percent in cost reduction because they are uh, overall like uh, uh, Typically, farmers have a, a curative approach to uh, their farming. So we have moved down to preventive approach, focus more on soil like uh, uh, nutrition, uh, and uh, then like try to basically preempt what kind of problems can come of the out of the crop. And ultimately, the quality and quantity of the produce has also basically uh, increased. So uh, we and primarily we have been physically present in uh, Madhya Pradesh. 
some parts of Rajasthan, some parts of uh, Maharashtra. Uh, but overall, digitally, the application is used by uh, people across the uh, country. Um, and uh, so that's been like almost four years of journey. Uh, uh, and uh, from here, moving forward, uh, uh, I think we always had a vision of uh, basically maximizing the income of a farmer wherein we have like primarily worked on the input like part over the last like four years and worked uh, have now developed it in a way that that is more of an on an autopilot like mode now we are also moving ahead from here on the output side where we are trying to basically like connect the same farmers who are our platform to uh, uh, enable them to sell the produce as well in the market through traders or through uh, processors and uh, so that part of the ecosystem uh, over the last five six months we have started like working on we are uh, now uh, building the, a marketplace where we can connect these uh, people and uh, 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 the way it is done that there is complete like traceability in terms of where the produce is coming from and what quality it is we get to know when the output would come out so therefore at the right time we can connect them with the right like buyers as well so it's a full stack like approach that we have taken uh, because we believe that the farmer should not go to multiple like uh, 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 solutions uh, and we should be able to basically provide it from one like single like uh, platform so that's primarily uh, about our business and we have seen like uh, uh, some success in terms of people uh, referring the entire like uh, 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 farmers have mainly like come in from referrals word of mouth which has been very strong so which basically has given a lot of uh, 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 organic like traffic on the uh, platform um, i think the uh, so this is more or less about the business um, in terms of like building it up uh, I, considering the fact that there are so many like people over here who would be thinking of starting their own uh, <coughs> uh, uh, startups or maybe who would already be like working on something or the other i think one thing which has been like of crucial like uh, importance in terms of how you basically like build the organization today we are more than 250 plus like people in the entire like organization and uh, um, building the right like business model uh, focusing on sustainability and uh, uh, then uh, going out to basically raise funds has been like critical because it's a large problem to solve and where certain problems are more structural in nature as well so how do you be, uh, overcome all those kind of challenges uh, uh, are something which we are always like cognizant of and <coughs> having the right kind of like money uh, is uh, has like helped us to basically uh, propel our like uh, uh, dreams so uh, i think uh, uh, pr uh, primarily speaking these are some of the things uh, uh, which have like uh, helped us to uh, basically take this uh, forward so in the entire like uh, uh, journey there were various like challenges while we were basically looking for information uh, where we can like bring it together there is already like existing uh, a lot of like information where, with agricultural universities who have done like experiments who have basically built their own package of practices which the farmers are used uh, using so we developed a core agronomy team which basically builds all these things collates the, uh, them and then like uh, uh, they uh, provide technical support and we have built a erp basically solution to uh, help them farmers like guide across the cropping cycle so uh, i think fundamentally these are the core like things which basically uh, we have been doing i would probably like like uh, uh, people are sharing their uh, Whole numbers, I believe, over uh, here. Don't worry about that. So that is uh, for the internal audience. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So uh, I think, uh, Bragant, it would be basically like good if uh, uh, we can make it more uh, interactive. If there are any questions, would be yes, sure. Uh, as well, uh, but sure. Uh, I think in part, I just wanted to focus on uh, more 
things coming from the entire like group uh, uh, so from here i can open it for people to ask like questions if there are sure so uh, thanks for sharing the story of gramophone so far and uh, i would like to invite the participants for interaction so uh, please come forward if you have questions uh, you'd like to uh, pose before Tosi, you can unmute yourself and speak uh, or otherwise you can enter it in the chat uh, good evening mr Tosi. my name is tapan uh, hi uh, hi uh, i wanted to uh, if i wanted to ask you if you could uh, comment a bit about uh, the differences between uh, the states, the differences between the farmers belonging to different states that you see on your platform. I mean, any patterns, anything that you can tell us about. Uh, that's number one. Number two is, can you also comment on the flowers market? Or is, 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 is gramophone involved in the flowers market? Are farmers growing flowers part of your market or not? Thank you so much. What do you do right now? I mean, like, are you working somewhere or are you thinking of? Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be launching my company in two to three months down the line. I'm laying the groundwork right now. Understood. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I was doing a PhD and I've quit it. And I've been uh, laying the groundwork for my uh, company since then. Understood. So uh, I think the first question in terms of if there is a difference between consumer like behavior, especially the uh, <coughs> farmer between like various like states. Uh, so, so I think when we were uh, uh, deciding about where to uh, start from, I actually like uh, belong to uh, Uttar Pradesh, UP. Uh, I come from Kanpur, and uh, uh, the natural like decision should have been to basically like start from UP, maybe. Uh, 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 but I think uh, uh, certain things which we had in our mind when we were uh, deciding about uh, where to start for, from was uh, basically the consumer behavior and the class of like consumers who are there more from uh, a ta target group who would be could become the early like adopters uh, so the kind of like uh, solutions we which we were thinking of for us i think as a company for us yeah, it was important that uh, 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 the people who we would probably like uh, uh, who could would become our customers would lie in a uh, <coughs> medium to uh, i would say small to medium kind of a farmer uh, uh, group who are looking to optimize their who are looking to earn more from the same like piece of land probably in our mind that very large farmers are uh, people who uh, uh, all already have like alternate source of incomes and yes their farming is majorly like uh, uh, done by uh, uh, is given to third party on lease or certain other like mechanisms whereas the medium kind of a farmer is somebody who himself is involved and is a little bit like more uh, uh, literate uh, to basically like understand what we are offering because in the early days for us it was also very important that we were very bootstrapped so we could not like go very down uh, to basically like build this now we are going doing that so on those like parameters be uh, the natural like uh, 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 questions were where is the higher like land uh, acreage uh, so because higher land acreage and uh, in terms of cropping intensity if you have that higher then the uh, uh, disposable income probably for people would be higher so mp if you compare with up and mp then both these states uh, up land area is like lower as compared to mp it's a, both of them are like large states but the population is almost 3x in uh, UP. So therefore, average land holding is around 0 0.7, 0 0.8 hectares in um, uh, UP, whereas in MP, it is around 2 hectares on an average. And the areas where we are present, at the <coughs> commercial crops like grow a little like more. So, uh, uh, but from a competitive dynamics uh, for, for people like us, probably Maharashtra would be a better like territory to start with because it's more advanced than Madhya Pradesh. But we chose to be present more in a virgin like geography. MP didn't have like a lot of competition. So so I think from a consumer like behavior point of view, view if you're entering into a business which requires higher evolved like customers, then I think uh, more, uh, I would say, uh, Western and southern like uh, india becomes a little like more uh, uh, better like geographies to do but if it is a business which is uh, basically 
uh, uh, involving like farmers where you can like uh, uh, those services are more basic in nature if i would say okay uh, where, where the uptake will be higher in lesser developed like geographies from an this i'm talking more from an input like perspective yes uh, and <laughs> i think it would like go uh, more towards output as well uh, the same like logic but uh, uh, then the up bihar jharkhand odisha all these like belts basically uh, where the need is there uh, but not many people actually like go to work in these like places so, right. so you can like with one like logic can also be that you can start from these kind of states now i think third thing is the overlay of maybe uh, uh, what kind of products you are looking at so then you look at more geographical like uh, uh, climatic weather kind of like conditions where that particular commodity or product is growing or where your market is so i think these are some of the uh, thought processes uh, which probably you can use to maybe like decide on geography where you start but i don't have like more information so with more information probably i can okay tell me uh the second question was uh, flowers and uh, are you involved with flowers at the present as uh, uh, so uh, as like you know that uh, uh, our the business how it is that it is more geo like led geography led than crop like led uh, so so in mp uh, mostly like wheat soybean onion garlic potato uh, there is lesser like uh, uh, flower kind of uh, farming that happens in central like and western mp in the north no, north western mp i think uh, uh, this area of mansoor neemaj all these places like herbs and flowers farming happen so <coughs> yes we do have like coffee but i think the focus is not uh, that uh, uh, we will like provide some kind of special advice to people who are growing like plants okay thank you so much uh, i have a question tasif ji yes bharat Yes. Uh, Tawseef ji, uh, as uh, we have been through uh, various uh, entrepreneurs uh, in this uh, show, where there are different kind of uh, business models which are being practiced by them, I want to know what's Gramophone's uh, business model as in uh, when it comes to the reach to the farmers, are you actually uh, towards uh, working towards the individual farmer like uh, having a small uh, holding of land or are, are you uh, towards the enterprise or fpo kind of a, uh, association sure. sure uh so um frankly speaking if i uh, look at my like uh, uh, so this uh <coughs> so the answer to the the question is actually like we work with individual like farmers uh-huh. uh, so uh, we uh, the way it is that uh, 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 till now we have not focused on more enterprise level like partnerships uh, where you get like a group of farmers and then you provide maybe like services via an enterprise i think that's not the uh, route that we have taken we have more on direct to farmer kind of a route and uh, uh, i think the fundamental reason for us to do that in the early days was uh that i have seen a lot of like products which are basically like uh enterprise like led that the solutions is being built to an enterprise and then they probably use it to uh, to uh, on their like farmers right so with uh, the way like at least we wanted to build a company we wanted to uh, do it at a much larger like scale and uh, we wanted to reach to the individual like farmers so that that benefit is very direct than like an indirect like benefit so that was more of a uh, uh, decision at a personal like level that we wanted to do that you wanted to be a more farmer led like organization uh, than a b2b business kind of led like organization now there could be various ways to reach like farmers probably one of the ways to partner with people who are already working with uh, a group of farmers it becomes a little easier to do it uh, but uh, frankly like speaking that uh, our most of the 90 95% of the customers would be individual farmers okay in that case uh, i have another question if uh, brigand ji shall i ask him 
or is there anyone else who's uh, yes please go ahead please go ahead if, if, uh, i'll see if there is any other question anybody else having a uh, question for tasif sure, sure. uh tasif yeah, please go ahead in that case say for example if i am operating in an area for example in up where uh, the land holdings are small as you said in mp less than 1 acre hectare or uh, something like that and uh, people are uh, uh, growing certain kind of a crop a couple of uh, crop by hearsay or whatever it is so is there any kind of a uh, way where you also work or uh, give out the solution to the people who are having small land holdings as to in the regional uh, perspective what can be done better to improve sustainability and as in the income of the farmer understood uh, so uh, see uh, i think the uh, uh, there are two challenges uh, from a information sir, point of view sir if my if, if i may barge in it is about individual say for example if bharat sharma is a farmer mm -hmm. he wants to connect with the gramophone and wants to have information directly sure, sure. so seconds. so uh, i i think on that a uh, 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 medical store right so therefore we have our own retail like centers as well and then there is a last mile delivery which is like built from uh, those centers uh and we work with the current ecosystem like players as well the current existing good retailers they can come on our platform the suggestion is they given by us a prescription is built if it is an area where we have our own like uh, uh, centers the delivery would happen from there uh, else like uh, it could uh, happen through a partner like store as well uh, so and our earnings right now we don't charge anything for advisory uh that is like free of cost our primarily our earnings come from sale of like products to our platform so uh tasif i have couple of questions for you so when you say that uh, your clients the farmers they have been able to improve the yield say by 20% or overall income has gone up by 20% so what are the critical factors or i would say the biggest factor there may be n number of factors but if i uh, want to know that okay one or two biggest factors which are contributing to this in your overall package uh, so it's this has also been like a, a, a journey like over last four years period of time i think the first like phase the larger problem which we had was people like believing that uh, 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 something like this would work uh and they uh, may be accepting the information that we are providing uh but over like uh, two three years period of time when you are working in the same area then there are like a real like examples who have used your like products and services to basically get that benefit so that problem doesn't like exist now but uh, uh, uh now i think from an implementation point of view the larger things that we focus on more we have seen that uh, farmers are more cognitive of the physical like damages uh, uh, or like pest pest problems to certain extent like diseases as well uh, but they they don't like focus a lot on nutrition like uh, kind of uh, uh, needs second uh, thing is that i think from a fertilizer requirement plus uh, Uh, products which basically uh, work on soil like uh, 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 so there is a huge like problem with on the soil like uh, 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 right now where the porosity has like uh, decreased uh, use of like uh, 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 urea dap uh, uh, has uh, and a mono like culture uh, is basically trying uh, creating a lot of like challenges so we have like created certain packages which basically like uh, uh, provide solubilizing like uh, uh, bacteria uh, which improves the soil like health and then we have also focused on the plant health where uh, if the health is right then the flowering uh, would be better and maybe the fruitions would be better and then the quality of like fruit so it's more technical from that like aspect the uh, outcomes have been much better and then curative uh generally uh, the practices are more curative if they are seeing like a pest and disease problems uh, uh insects then the application is made 
but once the uh, uh, these like uh, uh, western disease is already like uh, visible half the damage is already like that so i think more preventive approach and working on soil has been our key like uh, uh, um, uh, success where we have seen farmers have realized this they have got like better benefit as as compared to people who there are a lot of people who just like buy products uh, you they would see uh, it as a retail like channel but then there is a percentage of farmers who would use your advice as well so from an advice like point of view these are the key like factors on which we work to basically improve their like outcome so a related question would be that you yourself mentioned that uh, uh, the by the time the effects of pest or disease will be visible it may be too late so the yeah. farmers need to be sensitive they need to understand how to monitor the crops how to diagnose problems and report to you take timely actions so how do you take care of that aspect uh so i think on that like front uh like i uh, would say that if if the way we have built it that we already know the sowing date of each and every farmer who is there on our platform uh based on which we uh, uh there is certain kind of like forecasts which are built uh, uh it, so there is some uh, uh, sense to entire like agriculture in terms of stages of a crop and then like the diseases linked to those like stages or like certain interculture like operations which you have to do so there is a preemptive approach where by simple uh, i would say uh, uh, breaking the cycle into different stages and knowing what is <clears throat> linked to a different like uh, uh, problems that come at different so it's more of a knowledge map or a graph kind of a structure that we have built uh, now uh, we are also looking for additional information basically where we can build these models uh, uh, to preempt the uh, pest and disease like attack so right now it is more coming from localized like information that like there is a lot of chat and uh, uh, problems that people ask over the app so now there are certain things which we have done uh, like if there is a white fly attack uh, uh, in a chilly area then uh, probability of virus like uh, uh, coming in certain days increases so these kind of things we have done but the information which we are getting is more crowd source information than like a product which is more iot led or those kind of things where they, they are getting like other parameters at a micro level so it is more at a mic macro level as of now okay i went into a little bit technicalities but no i understand so uh, it's more kind of you are including uh, predictive technologies maybe satellite imagery weather conditions local climate uh, conditions and then based on that or and i also heard that you are having soil testing as a major component so all these factors combined together you are um, recommending yeah so there are n number of like parameters so certain parameters the information would be available and certain parameters probably the information at the last mile will not be available so we make do with what is available and we are working on making the other things like more available so uh, are you also looking at say uh, crop selection or recommending certain high value crops which can bring in more profit yes so now when we are we just like started the output side as well right uh, so therefore i think the capability to suggest like a farmer is a little bit higher so like if i know that turmeric is one of the higher value crop and in this particular area it is conducive for that growth till now we were not doing that a lot because far from a farmers and the basic like question is that where will we sell it sell it can you help us in that as well hum uga to lenge generally farmers would say ki matlab we will be able to grow it in some way or the other uh, uh matlab ho sakta hai the uh, uh, production would be lesser but still i'll be able to grow it if you basic do basic like uh, guidance but then where will i like sell it so once we are basically building the front end like platform as well our capability to suggest like becomes a little bit, bit more so it's work in progress i would say but certain places like uh, uh, basic crops like if they don't do chili which is a, a more remunerative but success rate in chili is like lower because of a lot of like virus load and all so confidence of a farmer is higher if he is working with us 
so we do suggest that you grow chili i will like uh, basically provide all kind of like end to end guidance so therefore we have converted certain farmers but i uh, frankly speaking that would be 1 to 2% of the entire like lot okay. today Okay, uh, so I'll stop to see that anybody else has questions. Yeah, uh, Jyotish. Uh, sir, uh, cropping is also doing the, the same thing, right? So cropping is more like, uh, I think earlier somebody had asked a question that uh, whether you are working with B2B like companies or directly a farmer. I think the basic like difference is that we have farmers on our platform who are directly come to us while cropin sells its solution to a business enterprise and they are, uh, they basically manage the process of a business like enterprise uh, it could be from giving them an erp for farmer like management or their like advisory uh, uh, management and then like finally for uh, 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 warehousing uh, risk so all those kind of products are more towards a business enterprise than a farmer that is the basic like difference between what we are doing and cropping maybe end solution might be built on similar kind of technology okay yes sir mr tapan had any question i think somebody yes 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 uh, but, but uh, <clears throat> okay i'll just uh, it's just a one okay i'll just ask i'm um, probably prat uh, sharma can go after that uh, uh, mr tausik i wanted to ask you uh, with the, you just mentioned that uh, chili farmers face some crop losses because of the viral load uh, yeah. what do farmers usually do with that uh, biomass do they burn it do they throw it what happens to it i mean as much as you know i think they uh, throw it i have not seen like in chili kind of crop that people like burn okay yeah. uh, and is is the practice of okay so which of these as much as you know which of these practices do farmers employ when it comes to deceased biomass do is, is is do they burn it or do they throw it across what have you observed what have you if you know in np i will not know about like uh, like chili is a larger crop in uh, andhra telangana uh, and uh, some parts of like maharashtra as well uh, mp it is one of the larger like overall but mp is a smaller area few districts but in these districts uh, i have not seen like a lot of practice more on uh, uh, care post uh, uh, if certain problem has come and like viral load if it is there then it might like stay for a longer period of time probably yeah. the practice would be to burn it but I, I have not seen it a lot actually in mp okay okay thank you so uh, there is a question by sai pavan in the chat box um, and i in fact also have something similar uh, so sai has asked are you using an r and d team for personalized approach for farmers so uh, my related question to do is uh, because if you are talking about multiple crops uh, there the agronomy specialty required is quite extensive right so you may be needing really you know experts with good experience with those crops so what was your challenge uh, you know in building that kind of advisory team uh so i think on this what we we typically like have hired people uh, till now uh, so there are people from an agronomy side uh, uh, so uh, with more than like 30 ex years of experience and then we also partner with some of the uh, primary research like institutes like in mp the soya bean like research institute uh, or like uh, the agriculture universities over here so we work with their uh, i would say um, uh, professors or scientists over there uh, mm -hmm. so uh, but uh, see it, it has already been almost like four and a half years for us working on them so these all the solutions were not for all the crops were not like built overnight uh, mm -hmm. so but uh, i think uh, we have like a pretty good internal uh, I, I would not call it as a R and D team, but like subject matter experts. Uh, yeah. on and the approach has been more, I would say, uh, uh, solution led than a very R and D led, frankly speaking. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, so at the end of the day, see when I am so trying to solve a problem, 
for a farmer he is more or less interested which product i have to buy or what is the combination of product that i have to buy so the approach has been in the same uh, way that i should be able to customize the solution for a farmer based on various like uh, 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 agronomic like pa parameters and based on market parameters also which is basically taking into consideration in terms of his cost of cultivation in terms of availability of a product in a particular market what brand works in that particular market so our like solution takes care of these two aspects and we try and do some kind of a fine balance where we don't get overboard with uh very heavy on like r and d and not able to basically give uh, a solution which is more uh, intuitive to a farmer okay uh, so mr lar larger like scheme of things if i have to basically give a small example then uh, we want to be a, a platform which has uh, a very granular information right from if i am talking about a uh, knowledge like map then what pest and disease is there what are the parameters on which it comes what is the uh, action on a plant at what part of it it, it acts and then uh, what are the cure for particular that thing what is the the weather conditions in which it like comes uh, so uh, in which if there is a, a relation with some kind of genus phylum to basically bring a co commonality to all these things so uh, i think ultimate like goal is to become that kind of a platform which has this at one place and you are able to basically build all your decision system on this use like various feedback loops ai machine learning but uh, i think a lot of people talk about ai and machine learning but hardly like it is being used by people but these are the uh, i would say um uh, uh uh building blocks for doing all those things yeah okay so i, I think uh, mr uh, bharat sharma had the question uh thank you professor mrigan tasir ji i have a question and it's about like gramophones so past maybe going by the way that you said that you involved with the uh, low end user like the small land holder so gramophones past maybe the present which it comes to uh, when it comes to mobilizing the farmers in accepting things like uh, iot or agricultural practices or i tech whatever it is sure. and, and my basic question is as you said there is a difference in the psyche of a farmer like a up farmer will have a different psyche as you said a mp a maharashtran farmer has, is more bold as in yeah so when, when we say that uh, a, a concept or an idea is to be propagated are there any kind of a do's and don'ts which you would advise to on a level so that an idea or a concept can be mobilized between them so sure. so i think some context would be a little bit more helpful in answering this question uh but if i have only this information uh, uh then a generic like uh, um uh, I, 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 i'm sorry i'm sorry i'll just uh, barge in between for example sure. professional uh, mrigang has been asking the same questions like what is the impact how what are the factors which have improve the yield uh, whether it has been protection or it has it been insecticide or pesticide or fertigation whatever it is see so, and there have been uh, areas where we have seen that uh, it has been advised that a small poc kind of a thing has to be done mm -hmm. in an area so that mm -hmm. you mobilize uh, the effort say for example gramophone started with a novel idea at a mm -hmm. very small level grassroots mm -hmm. level Mm -hmm. I'm not talk, uh, talking about uh, like uh, enterprise or FPOs where are 500, 600, five farmers. Mm -hmm. so what are the things that you uh, advise as do's and don'ts? Sure. So, so, uh, um, so, I think uh, just to give a little like background, we uh -huh. did start with very grassroots level. Okay. Uh, I like uh, today we are a 250 member like company. frankly speaking uh, we started with a very very small like capital 
uh, I today also have a personal like loan from one of my friends uh, when I'm working on this. Although we have built a large company, but we started with two people in the organization, me and my partner, Nishan. And with a very small like capital of five, six lakhs. That too, uh, Udhar Lekar. So, so uh, 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 I think the answer to your question is, uh, you have to get down on ground. Like when we were, uh, you said that you have to do a small like POC. We did that. For the first like one year, we were just like a four member team. True. This is I'm talking from 2016 to 2017. In 2017, we started like growing when we showed certain like results in terms of POCs. I used to go there on bikes on ground. I used to buy product and deliver it on a bike. We used to have like a broken, uh, I would say, uh, van to deliver it, which used to go in, had like, uh, what should I say, holes in the base and it, uh, its steering used to go on the left side. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there is no, uh, like, I would say one solution fits all kind of uh, uh, solution for, for, for uh, your like uh, question. But uh, uh, I think we start like a company bootstrapped startup. Uh, there are various like uh, things when you are looking for success in the early days, what is very, very, very important is you don't like burn yourself up uh, uh, and uh, you take care of uh, every kind of aspects of the business which is right from when your money will like get dry how much you can like borrow more uh, where when uh, what will lead you to maybe like to raise additional money so i also spend uh, time in venture capital investment for a couple of years before joining like Cropin for I, with Cropin, I was there for, for only four five months. Okay. Then I started this, but then before that, I was at, at a venture capital like fund. So these are things which probably we were very careful of that. How much can I like in, in myself invest into it? Because I was already in debt. I had like 18 lakh of loan from when I was studying at I am the bar. So, uh, but I ended up starting this. So, but why our core like objectives? larger objectives were to basically solve for the farmers maximizing his income that <coughs> were there but my shorter term like six months goal was survival and that survival was based on showing certain like metrics that there is a uptake of this like solution so that i can go to investors and raise that kind of money on a larger picture that capability i think uh, uh, and uh, uh, the rest of the things were already a tick for us. Uh, so that was not a problem, at, at least for us. Now, with a larger story and a very strong execution, I think a lot of people believed in us because I was probably like working in Bangalore and my other co-founder was working in Mumbai. We just to indoor for starting this up. And then we went on ground to basically do our POCs, work with farmers. So our first customers, we went to door to door. We gave like at 5 a.m. We used to carry small pamphlets, go on bike, and find like people who were uh, probably at milk collection center or aggregation points for farmers to come in in the morning. So we used to explain them about the concept, ask them to call on the toll free number, and then like somebody, uh, one of us in itself used to sit at the call center to take their call, and then another guy was there in market to pick up the product from somewhere, anywhere you get it. And then finally, like you deliver it at the last while. So that traction was important that there is an uptake of this because agri tech overall today has become more talked about in 2019 and 20. But when we started in 2016, it was the situation was not that uh, uh, good, I would say. So therefore, it took extra like efforts to basically like gauge interest and being cognizant of the fact that what would get interest while you are building a business uh, uh, then an ngo or more csr kind of an outfit which outfit will need similar approach the probability of success like goes higher if you have planned it in this way not like uh, 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 i would say uh, i'm running a business so therefore there are certain 
key like objectives and metrics that I will have at different points of time. Like first two years were more survival. Then we started like building our all technology like stack. And first two years were also very important for us that we should work on ground and look at what are the operational like problems in the entire business that we will get. How will we, I make my farmer like believe that what we are doing will actually like work. So therefore, naturally, I had to go on ground to do that. I hope I answered some part of your question. But if you um, really want to discuss in detail, we can take it offline as well. Sure, 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 sure. And uh, uh, based on the, the reply that I received, uh, Tosivji, I have just small question, uh, mm -hmm. Professor Brigant, if I can, or if somebody else wants to ask. Uh, we can see whether uh, is there any other question for Tosiv. Uh, if not, we can uh, take one last question from uh, Mr. Bharat. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Tosivji, so uh, just going by the generic idea of. Uh, uh, gramophone more active in Maharashtra front. So by the two years of experience that you have been having uh, in interaction with the farmers, low level farmers regarding uh, the, the behavior pattern, is there kind of a uh, 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 suggestion that you would like to give for the uh, psychological algorithm one should make while interactive with the interacting with these people like for example if i want to start something in uh, a hustle in uh, up so there is a different uh, target segment which you may not be having the information about but if i have to operate in that area then i need to uh, take care of certain things where in up are you from sorry uh, i'm uh, operational in Bagpat area okay Bagpat. and uh, in uh, Uttarakhand I have a partnership in a small uh, poly house of poly succulent uh, plants hmm. okay okay so so uh, I think just what has like worked with us in general overall uh, uh, when you're working with a farmer is uh, there is no like very specific formula, but one thing like which, which works with rural like community in general is empathy. I, what, what we have like felt. So if you go more as a, so I think if I position gramophone in a, uh, so this is a question which I generally like ask people uh, during an interview that if uh, uh, you, your consumer is explaining what we are doing, then yeah. there is a, uh, like I said, that you, if you think of gramophone as a, a, a human being, then what kind of person would you like think about it? Whether gramophone is a doctor or whether it's a college like senior who you can basically uh, interact with, go yeah. on a party with, yeah. or, uh, or a very like a buddy, your friend who is basically there. So I think the answer to that for us, what has worked is somewhere in between, where okay. you he, you are more as a partner to him. You don't become like uh, because our customers are also a little like young age guys who are in the range of 25 to 30, 40 years of, okay. of old. So these are guys. If you become too preachy to them, then they I feel like they disconnect. And if you become too friendly to them, then uh, they then the relationship will become sour after a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to maintain a balance. So therefore, you that guy is some kind of a college like friend uh, who you look up to also. But mm -hmm. you can be playful and uh, uh, can be a friend as well. Okay. So, so that kind of thing has probably like worked for us uh, because we are more uh, we've taken that position and that has worked. You can also be a doctor uh, for that guy probably but we want to have an image of a company which is more closer to a farmer we are not just uh, solving for his agriculture related problem in the larger scheme of things we might get into financial services we might get into healthcare as well because that guy needs all these things he's already there on our, on our platform so that's the position that we have taken okay that means a, a 360 degree kind of an approach uh, for a uh, collaboration. Yeah, uh, yes, exactly. So rather than like me, the, uh, that man like I am who do pancake and I'll like tell you everything. We also look for information from them. We become the part, try and become the part of their like daily life. 
which gives you a lot of like uh, scope to basically like do things over a period of time. Thank you so much, Tawasif Ji. In fact, I personally have seen that like uh, how civilians are treated, the farmers, they treat uh, sherry people like uh, illiterates. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's a very good way of actually uh, uh, yeah. or uh, understanding their psyche. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Professor thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sharma, for your questions. Uh, so uh, we had a very nice discussion, and uh, I I request all others who have more questions for Tasi for what to interact. Uh, please feel free to either email us. Uh, you can send me uh, the email on the ID from which you are getting the invite for the event, and we'll be happy to pass it on to Tasi. Uh, if you uh, want to interact with Tasi, uh, you know we'll be happy to share his email IDs. You can connect with him. So uh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'll just like ping my email over here if somebody wants to reach out. Can reach sure, out. sure. So here uh, Tosif has uh, typed out his email as well in the chat box. So all of you who want to uh, contact him, please uh, feel free to reach him. Uh, so thanks, Tosif. It was a wonderful interaction session and a lot of nice questions. Uh, and uh, uh, we are looking forward to your association with the, the Agri Business Incubation Center at Kharagpur also. Please uh, consider uh, starting some activities in the vicinity of Kharagpur, and it will be really great to have you associated with the center as well. So we'll touch base in this regard uh, very soon. Sure. Thanks a lot for spending time with us. Looking forward to uh, further interaction with you in future. Thank you. Sure. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we'll meet again tomorrow. You will be getting the schedule for tomorrow's uh, session by email. Uh, uh, looking forward to tomorrow's uh, program. Thank you. Professor Nizam? Yes. I'm interested in uh, uh, yesterday HN Mishra, Dr. HN Mishra's uh, nutrition oil. Uh, how much it cost? Uh, can I? Please send an email. Please send an email regarding that. Okay, thank you. Sir? Yes. Sir, do we have alternate session because of yesterday we don't have any session or every day we are getting the email right so only sunday we did not have any session otherwise every day we are having session okay sir yesterday session present on youtube or not every session is present on youtube okay thank you sir, sir how many ideas uh, you will take to uh, this program hackathon there is no limit. So if we get uh, 20 good ideas, we will take all 20. If we get only 5 good ideas, we will take only 5. So uh, that depends upon how many uh, good submissions we are getting and how many people are really committed to doing the you know work. Many times people are not serious. They are not submitting. Uh, they are submitting just for the sake of you know participating in the event. So we want serious teams who are dedicated and who have the passion to really act on the ground and uh, work for their startup. When we will get the link, we will get the information very soon. So uh, the hackathon will be starting uh, next week onwards. Sun uh, Monday there is an inaugural session, so which is going to be inaugurated by the uh, education minister, and it's a major program happening on Monday. You will get all the details. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So let us connect tomorrow.